Now, when helping someone understand how to use celery juice the right way, I'm sometimes kind of reluctant to even talk about celery juice because there's a really popular book out there about celery juice and a lot of the information in there is just really not great information. It just kind of, some of the information kind of belongs in maybe like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. And I don't say that to disrespect Bugs Bunny, I'm just saying that I'm not a fan of the book. And uh, I don't like to send people off to, hey, I read that book because it was about celery juice and I'm doing everything in it. And it just seems like there's a lot of mistakes that people can make. So I wanna kinda help you understand how to use celery juice the right way. And in this video, not only gonna understand how to use it, but you're gonna understand when not to use it. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So the first thing we need to understand about celery juice is that it is not magical. There are not a bunch of leprechauns in the juice that are coming out and creating all these healing properties of celery juice. It's going to heal your acid reflux. It's going to heal your eczema. It's not doing that. What it's doing is it's helping the body function the way that it's supposed to function by helping to correct some problems. So when there's a bacterial overgrowth in the stomach, a lot of times the waste product that that bacteria can create can be very alkaline which can alkalize that stomach and remove your ability to acidify your food correctly. Some bacteria can even turn off your ability to produce that HCL stomach acid that helps us acidify our food. And if you can't acidify your food, you can't break your food down and access the nutrients that are in that food. That's kind of why we eat food. So it's the nutrients in the food that give our body all these tools it needs to help things function correctly. So when someone can't digest their food correctly, they don't have access to all those nutrients and a lot of problems can come about. So when you're helping the body digest better, you're really not creating magic, you're just helping correct some problems. So the most common issue is that when there's not enough stomach acid, there's gonna be some type of bacterial overgrowth. And it appears that a lot of factors in celery juice have the ability to not only wipe out bacteria and actually kill them off, but it also gives your body some of the nutrients that your body needs to make hydrochloric acid. The body needs minerals and nutrients to make hydrochloric acid. So now the celery juice can give the body the tools that it needs in an easy to access manner. Your body doesn't need to digest the celery to access those nutrients. It goes right in when it's juiced in this liquid form that's really easy for the body to assimilate. So that can increase the body's ability to make more of its own HCL. Now understand that using celery juice is not going to replace HCL. If you're in a situation where you need to supplement with HCL capsules in order to acidify your food correctly, uh, celery juice is not going to replace that, but it could reduce the amount of time that you need to supplement with HCL. If you can start making more of your own HCL, then that's gonna reduce the amount of HCL you need to supplement with, as well as the length of time that you may need to supplement with that. So that's why we really use celery juice when the goal is to reduce a possible bacterial overgrowth and help a person restore their acid function in their stomach. The goal when we use it is not for magic. We're not trying to make magic. We're trying to help the body function the way that it's supposed to function. So one important thing to do when you're gonna drink celery juice is you really wanna make it fresh and you only wanna use organic celery. You don't want to use standard celery that's going to have all these pesticides because juicing celery makes it much easier to access all the nutrients in that celery. But it also helps it make it easier to access all the toxins that could be in the celery if there's all kinds of pesticides on there. So when you're going to juice something, you really want to use only organic. And you probably want to remove the leaves and, and then wash it because the leaves can make the celery juice a little more bitter. And I'm gonna let you know, celery juice is not delicious. So it can be a little gag worthy at first. It may take you a little bit of time to get used to it, um, but know that you kinda do. And as your body sees, oh, I can really use these nutrients, your taste buds will change and you're like, oh my gosh, I like celery juice, what is wrong with me? But just know at first, it might not be delicious. So you wanna remove the leaves so that you can help make it at least a little bit better. The other thing is that you wanna drink 12 to 16 ounces of juice at a time. And you don't wanna just sip it, you really wanna drink it, and you wanna fill this stomach 
because you want to let it all soak into that mucus lining and everything and really kill off the bacteria that's hiding in there. So you want to drink a large amount in one sitting and really fill the stomach so you can let it do its job. That's why it's really important to do this on an empty stomach first thing in the morning so you can fill the stomach with just the celery juice. Another important factor is that it needs to just be celery juice. You can't put anything in there to increase the flavor. I'm just going to squeeze some lemon. I'm going to put some of this, you know, shake powder in there. I'm going to put some strawberry juice to make it taste better. It needs to just be the celery juice. And when you mix it with other things, it can make the whole process a little bit less effective. But that's why we want to do it fresh. Um, and that's going to really magnify its ability to do its job. We have heard from some people that, hey, I made two doses at once and then I put it in a jar with a lid on it and it still seemed to be as effective like the next day. But you really wouldn't want to do more than that. And the more often that you can just make it fresh, it's really going to be more effective. So when we're thinking about what we should expect, if you're showing signs of a significant bacterial overgrowth, maybe you're having a lot of burping or bloating or acid reflux or constipation, those are all really strong signs of very low stomach acid. And when there's low stomach acid, bacteria is coming in. It's coming in on the food that we're eating and the stomach acid is our barrier. It's what kills and fries these guys in an acid bath as they come in. So when stomach acid is not there, when there's not enough stomach acid, an overgrowth is coming in and setting up camp. So if someone's having a lot of those symptoms of showing really low stomach acid, know that when you do a large amount of celery juice right at once, you could really kill off a lot of bacteria at once, which can create a lot of discomfort, whether that discomfort would be cramping or nausea or bloating or maybe some diarrhea issues as you're killing all, the, all these bad guys and the body's like, get this stuff out of here. It could create a diarrhea episode. So if you have significant issues, you might want to start with like just half. Do like a half a glass the first time that you do it just to see if it creates a lot of discomfort. And then you can work up to a full glass. And also understand, oh, I'm getting cramping. Celery juice gives me cramping. That's really not what's going on. It's killing off bacteria. And the killing off process of bacteria can create cramping for a variety of reasons. So the things you want to look at, you might want to look to see, do I have cramping? And that can give you some indication of how significant the issue may be. You also want to watch your stool because this has the ability to loosen up your stool. And for a lot of people with low stomach acid, that's going to be a really big help. A lot of people with low stomach acid are dealing with constipation because that's one of the underlying causes of constipation. It's not the only one. We'll put a link in the description below this video for our video on understanding constipation so you can understand other things that can create that as well. But when there's low stomach acid or a lot of bacteria in the stomach or the small intestine, that can really alkalize that intestinal tract and slow things down. So if celery juice is killing off bacteria, helping to acidify the stomach, or helping the body make more HCL to help acidify the stomach and acidify our food, it can help the stool move better. But dying off a lot of bacteria at once can create like diarrhea episodes. So you kind of want to watch your stool to get an indication of what's going on. And if you're dealing with a lot of constipation, you may find that over time that you need to do less celery juice because it started to make your stool a little bit too loose. It has that ability, so that's kind of when you want to watch out and say, oh, okay, do I need to skip how often I'm doing celery juice or do I need to stop it, you know, for months at a time? You're going to watch your stool and that's going to give you some indications. Just know that the first time you do it, if you get crazy diarrhea, it could be from the die off. And that's not telling you, oh, it's not right for you. It's just telling you that your problem was significant and you might want to take things a little bit slower. Okay, so we talked about you might need to skip some days, but if you are supplementing with HCL to fix any low stomach acid issues, then understand that as you improve the bacterial overgrowth and as you give your body tools to help it make more of its own HCL, you may need to start reducing your HCL supplementation until eventually you don't need any at all and your body's just making its own HCL like a human would do. So you just kind of want to watch those things to get indications of how much celery juice should I be doing? Should I stop it and just use HCL or do I not even need to use the HCL anymore? And the length of time that someone may need this will vary, but most people need to drink celery juice for about a month or maybe two, or maybe they start to drink it maybe once a week or so after that first month. 
But one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that somebody thinks that celery juice is going to fix the whole problem. And if someone has a significant overgrowth, especially if it's like H. pylori or something aggressive, they're going to need to do more than just celery juice. Celery juice can be a piece of the puzzle, but it's not magic and it's not going to fix everything in the world if that problem is significant. So what I want you to do right now is jump over to watch our video on how to wipe out bacteria in the stomach to get more tools that could help take this problem down a lot faster. I can't wait to hear about your results.